Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here, NAB 2016, on the show floor at the Red Rock booth with Brian. Hey. Now, Brian, you guys have brought out sort of a, a new ecosystem of, uh, of kit sort of uh, here this year, and it's called the Eclipse system. Yes. And there's a lot of different components that, that are a part of it that all sort of work together um, or can work independently. But tell me what the Eclipse system is all about and what you guys got going on that are a part of it. Great. Well, I mean, I, a new ecosystem is a good way to think about it. Um, we, we really focused after last year, we got a lot of a great uh, response to Halo systems, a lot of other things that we've done. Mm -hmm. Most of the sense of urgency when we talked to people was really around these small crews and solo operators who would say like, look, this is great, but I don't have somebody who's going to control this piece or the other piece. I need to really be able to do it by myself. Like, what do you actually have going on? Yeah. So we really focused a lot of our time and attention in terms of developing our products on the solo operator small crew market. It's not to say that these things um, aren't usable in larger crews, they're totally adaptable. You can just turn on extra pieces, they're ready to go if you have an AC or other. Uh, but the point is, crew. they're simple enough for one man simple to enough, be able but to also, do it. Yeah, but also they're, they're functional enough. Mm -hmm. So we start, for example, with the Atlas motor. This is a brand new motor. Um, we've, what we've done is we've actually taken all of the components of the base station and the torque motor that we currently provide. It's a brand new generation. We completely redesigned it. We put it into a single housing. So this is the total piece of uh, the motor. So that's your, your base station and your torque motor sort of merged together into one single Exactly. Unit. So it has um, both long range uh, radio for doing a wireless device. We also have built in Wi-Fi capabilities. And so for all of the Eclipse generation of products, you be able to actually use a Wi-Fi based mobile app to either control it or configure it. And all of the features that we're going to show are all you know, basically user definable in terms of uh, brightness, dimming, uh, assignability, a lot of the features uh, that we talk about. Nice. And so you can control all of that from an app that you guys are, are exactly. going to be releasing along. Exactly right. So uh, the other thing about these is um, they're daisy chainable. So okay. you can actually add multiple um, channels. In the example that we have back here, we actually have a focus and iris system. Um, and it's really simple to actually choose a channel. You just sort of move the joystick, or of course, as I mentioned, use the mobile app, and it will actually assign uh, the different channels. Yeah, so you like what you've got back there, if you've got multiple of your Atlas motors, you've got one for iris control, one for focus control. Right. You can easily assign which one's doing which. Right, and on a demo we have over here, it's uh, we have focus and zoom. It can do fizz, no problem. Kind of as a, as a uh, piece of that, we've now uh, come out with a brand new version of our finger wheel. It's mm -hmm. almost like not even a, sec a next generation, but it's, 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 it's finger wheel plus. We've got uh, both iris and focus on the finger wheel itself. And on the front here, we actually have three assignable channels. So the first preset is for um, the zoom control. It does okay. little, the joystick here does the uh, zoom control. The third preset does a gimbal pan and tilt. Uh, with a little bit of roll trim, so you've actually basically got a free gimbal thumb wheel controller. In so there. you have that control over your right. gimbal right. right from your thumb. It works for any of the gimbals, it works for free fly, it works for DJI, it works for any S bus enabled gimbal. The nice. second piece, which is really nice, is we call the, the, it's the orbit monitor gimbal. And yeah. what this allows you to do is, it's particularly for gimbal operators, it's really difficult when you're going from low to high or any sort of in between to be able to see the monitor. So uh, in the example that Omar is showing, um, he's, he's actually going from very, very low to very, very high, and the monitor, no matter what level, is always facing the operator. So we think about that as just how do we increase the range of operability while you're still giving some accuracy to the framing uh, for the operator. And that's important because one of the things that you, you can do and you have the freedom to do is those sort of faux crane shots with your arms while you're working with a gimbal. But yeah, if I start down low below my waist, I'm tilting my monitor, locking it in position so that I can see it there. Right. But the problem is, when I raise up, I can't see it anymore. Yeah, and that's, I mean, the idea is how do we enable a solo operator to take full advantage of the gimbal and all the things that not only uh, do they want to do, but they're going to be asked to do, yeah. and actually do it in a way that they're going to have confidence to do that. And that's just a great example of a very straightforward tool that has a lot of value for folks who are kind of doing it themselves. It's a great, it's a great solution to something that everybody has that problem, but no one has really thought about the fact right. that, you know, something could easily be done like that. True. Now, the problem everyone has thought about and everyone's asked us about is the Halo unit. So yes, last that year, was a big one last year. Last year, we demonstrated Halo, which was kind of the scene mapping focus tracking system. Yeah. It was a great tool. I mean, it had a beautiful visual display where you could actually touch dots and it would actually track focus between people. 
again, when we came out of that, the sense of urgency for people responding back to us was, this is great, I need something really I can just use on my own, like mm -hmm. what do you have for me to do? And this is, uh, now we've come out with a version of Halo called Halo Solo. Okay. I want to be clear, Halo still exists, it's going to be come out, it's everything that we hope it's going to be. But this particular version, Halo Solo, is really for the solo operator. So you see we have it mounted up here. Uh, on the version we have over here, it's mounted below. Okay. And what it will do is you can uh, use it as a range finder to tell you the distances. Yeah, it's, it's telling the distance right there. Right, and it's a laser base, it's an infrared laser, so it's safe on the eye, it's totally accurate, it's a beam, it goes out to about 100 feet. Okay. Um, but the really cool thing is we enable it and it actually drives the focus motor, so it's, as you're moving back and forth, or as your subject is changing, it is um, actually tracking the focus. Um, we like to be clear that it's, we don't think about it as autofocus. You, know, you see sort of dual pixel from Canon and some other things. Yeah. You know, there it's kind of where you're letting everything happen uh, by the system itself. There's a lot of error that happens. There's a lot of focus hunting. Yeah. Maybe you're focusing on something you don't want to. And we really focus our time and attention on making sure that you can move easily between autofocus and manual focus. And you have the ability to quickly pause or move between manual and pause seamlessly. So. I might be dollying into you, yeah. and then as I move across, I may want to pause that so it's not focus hunting, tracking. So it doesn't tracking. try and pull, pick something. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So the idea is, uh, and also with the camera movement itself, or the lens movement rather, we really spent the time and effort to make sure it's very organic. So it's got a lot of smoothing, it's got the ramping, it's like people are pulling focus as opposed to autofocus, which kind of tends to snap. It just hits its marks and goes, yeah, yeah. it tends to snap. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not the kind of cinematic production value it's that we're aiming less, for. More, less of an organic kind yeah. of look and feel yeah. to it. So together, we call this the, the Halo systems, the Halo generation of products. Okay. Um, part of the reason we talk about this is um, they are actually all networked together. So as I mentioned, the mobile app, allows you to configure all of them uh, from one place. Mm -hmm. um, an example here, we're running this on LPE6 battery. I can go ahead and actually take this motor, and uh, you probably didn't uh, expect this, but I can actually plug this directly into the Halo, and it will actually power the motor directly from this uh, battery. Huh. So if I want a really, really small, lightweight system to do focus tracking, this is literally all that I need. And it's a really nice, kind of very configurable so that way to track do this. It. And then right. you can configure this and set it up so that it's, it's going to do your focus and that's it. That's, that's your exactly whole system right. right there. So we don't need PTAP, we don't need external uh, controls, although on our, all of our um, gimbal demos, it's running directly from the, battery, from the gimbal battery itself. So it's just a really nice way to integrate it in. Yeah. Well, last thing I'll mention, a lot of folks get into aerials and we're sort of seeing some of the higher end aerials coming now. The Very Alta, so. the Alta has come out. Now the M600 from DJI, these are heavy lifter yep. drones. And we're talking about being able to use your own camera, the camera you want. Um, still lens control and camera control has been a bit of a follow on to that. Like no one's really thought that through. Very much so, Well, yeah. part of our um, Atlas motors uh, is the built-in S-Bus uh, port. So this actually allows you to take this motor plug it directly into your uh, receiver on your drone. This would be part of the drone receiver. It's not ours, this is Futaba. Yeah. And you can actually map it as a channel directly into your Futaba spectrum controller, whatever. And this allows you to get the range of your existing transmitter, which is usually thousands of meters. Huh. And also it's only six ounces of motor. You don't have any power, additional power or additional control capabilities. There's no brain that you need to put in there. So it's a really brilliant way to have either the option or to actually use it in the aerial cinematography realms. So you can put this up there and you can have your controller with that same range that it has to actually right. control the aircraft. You can have somebody, you could even give somebody, a cameraman, a dedicated second controller with a link into that. Yeah. So and, you, and he could pull and work the focus, map it to whichever lever or, or function he feels exactly. comfortable Exactly. So, and we can do focus, we can adjust the iris, we can adjust the zoom, we can start and stop the Anything camera. Anything you can put a motor on, you can control it. Right. So the idea is that we, uh, or should say you as a solo operator with a very small crew, now have the ability to adjust lens and camera settings without having to pull the drone down from the sky, which is kind of a big deal. Yeah. Very big deal. Well, that's <coughs> amazing. Uh, it's a, a huge 
line of products that you've come out and the fact that they all integrate and work together so seamlessly, all being controlled by the app. Like you said, you've got the Orbit, you've got the, uh, the Halo Solo, you've got the Navigator to put all the controls right at your fingertips on the gimbal, um, the, and then the Atlas motors. I mean, everything just all together. Right. Uh, wh when is this system uh, and all of its components going to be available for people, and what are, what are some of the prices on some of these things? I know we've got a lot Right, here. so we are taking pre-orders now. It's going to be shipping summertime. Okay. All, all of the elements that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to purchase everything I talked about, you know, one channel system, it's a little over $4,000. Individually, these are $1,000 per channel. Okay. Uh, and again, no extra pieces associated with that. Um, the Halo uh, solo system is about $1,200. Okay. Uh, the Navigator grip is $595, and the Orbit uh, monitor gimbal is about $895. Okay. So we like to think it's reasonably affordable for the things that you really want to do. I think it most certainly is, and especially for people who are, like you said, operating by themselves, or might be on a gimbal, or for, you know, even if you're starting to get into complex aerials where you need that lens control and camera control, I, I think it's a great solution for it. It's a good way to think about it, yeah. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. Guys, be sure to be on the lookout for all of this uh, coming later in the year, like you said, around summertime. And stay tuned for more coming from NAB 2016.